This is just a reminder on how to use the personal drivers when you are coaching somebody. Bearing in mind this is part of the nurturing coach part of the Inspiring Leader program. The five drivers as we know it came out of research that was done in 1975. It's often referred to as Kayla's five common drivers and it identifies the key behaviors that come out of people's behavior both with stress or outside of stress. Bear in mind this so often happens. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy. Where somebody has a negative belief, if I make a presentation it will be a failure. That leads to an emotional reaction. I fear failure and rejection. I'm oversensitive to the group and I tense up. The result is skills disruption. I look and sound wooden. I dry up. I over explain or ramble. My presentation is a failure. Confirmation. I told you so. There I go again. There's something wrong with me. And that carries on driving the belief that that person does not, is not able to do a presentation. What came out of the research is what was referred to as surface blocks simply were symptoms of something much deeper and much more significant. When you look at surface blocks it filtered down bringing out emotions of fear, guilt and anger but it filtered down to what they refer to as core blocks of be perfect, try harder, be strong, please people and hurry up. All of that resulted in negative self-belief. I'm not okay and they mustn't find out about me. So going through the five key drivers or five personal drivers, be perfect is one and typically that's what you would see. Tight measured speech, body language, you know, fairly well-dressed, uh, fairly obsessive in what people believe in. Those were the strengths if you have a perfect, be perfect person, the results are very good, high standards, uh, check facts, deal with detail, manage to finish lots of things. But the downside is they could miss deadlines because they're trying to make it 100% perfect, get lost in the detail. You'll have everything because I'll send you this report, um, but that's some of the key things that have been identified to do with a be perfect person. How would you coach someone like that? Well, if they're fairly uptight and sort of uh, very focused on what they're doing, a bit of laughter, make it a bit more fun. Praise people, including for less than perfect work. Get them to understand that today's world, where speed is everything, people need to get stuff done. And maybe well done is better than 100% perfect. Be specific with criticism and, and praise. And partner them up wherever possible with somebody who's a hurry up, somebody who gets the work done fast. A combination of the two of them would be a very good way of actually helping both parties. Try harders, uh, interested, enthusiastic, patient, sitting forward, chin in hands, puzzles and frowns. They're nice to have in a team, they volunteer a lot, there's lots of enthusiasm, lots of good things. But the weakness is they don't follow through, they don't complete. They seldom finish a task. They keep trying rather than doing, and and that is the risk. That is more of the detail. And as, once again, I'll send you the, the PowerPoint presentation so you'll have it. But when you are working with somebody who is a try harder, what you're trying to do with them is help them to complete, uh, help them to get things done. Uh, get them focused on less uh, so that they, they're not just trying to do everything. Um, helping them to move from trying to succeeding. You know, stop them moving from another task before they've completed. Help them distinguish between that which is achievable and that which is not realistic achievable. So that's the try harder. Be strong. You know, calm, dispassionate, unemotional, controlled, you know, straight and tired, doesn't smile much, a bit of a loner. Uh, great strengths, you know, calm under pressure, great in the crisis, very reliable. They, they are sort of super people to have as a friend or as a team. Their weakness is, is they tend to hold things to themselves. So they might not be good at delegation. Um, and, you know, 
they they because they are so strong they they're highly self-critical they're very task oriented they might set unrealistic tasks for themselves uh, tend to not to show their feelings they don't like to ask for help they're a tower of strength so those are all the additional points when you are coaching somebody who is a be strong um, try and sort of focus on the feelings and emotions and praise them when they do consider other people because a be strong will keep their emotions inside and could be seen as quite cold uh, try putting them in a little bit more vulnerable situations and uh, uh, help them to sort of you know, deal with their emotions and help them to sort of realize when they handle things well that they've done a good job and um, it, it is um, really about getting them to truly sort of uh, address their own emotions and also get them to sort of open up and share their weaknesses because that's what they would clam up on. Whatever you do, they, they're really sort of good contributors and, uh, but help them to, to actually feel more relaxed and more willing to open up. Please people, wonderful people in the team, very eager, enthusiastic, good listeners. They volunteer, they good team players. They, they really want harmony in the team and they notice people's feelings. And you know the weaknesses are they, they, they tend to lack assertiveness and as a result tend to overload themselves. They could be oversensitive to criticism you know because they feel they're doing a really good and helping lots of other people why are people picking on me they like harmony they hate sort of conflict and you know they they play a really really important part within a team and and um, and do need to be looked after and make pleasing themselves one of the criteria because invariably they neglect themselves and and they need to put themselves on their sort of uh, helping uh, group you know, help them to actually deal with criticism and, you know, help them to see that pleasing others turn could turn into a bit of a dysfunctional sort of action, particularly if they overload themselves and end up neglecting themselves and actually not doing their jobs properly. And uh, but they they are sensitive invariably and look after them. They they great members of the team and need help. Hurry ups, very fast, fidget a lot. Yes, they, they tend to actually sort of speak fast. They work quickly. They get lots done. They're good at deadlines and they're good at several things at once. You know, they they really do get things going. But and unless they are paired with another driver, because we all paired with another driver, unless they paired with sort of perfectionism, they could make mistakes. They could be poor quality of work, and a lot of it is they might not listen properly, leave things to the last minute, and maybe happy with good enough rather than making things perfect. The, um, the you know, there are lots of sort of benefits that come out of a hurry up, but they tend to have to slow down for other people. <clears throat> and the one thing you can do if you're coaching them is ensure they think things f uh, through better. Um, <clears throat> And help them to be without doing, you know, just to slow down, sort of slow down their body language. If if you are sort of coaching or if you have a direct report who's a hurry up, the best thing you could ever do is restrict them to the most important tasks. So getting them to understand less is more is probably one of the best things you could possibly do. So that they channel their energy into what is the most important for the organization. Uh, partner them wherever possible with a be perfect or maybe they've got be perfect as part of their their their, their structure and convince them to start with the why before jumping into the what and how and teach them to get their key stakeholders on board before they rush off and change the world so those are the key uh, the five key drivers <clears throat> and those are the tips that you can follow when you are coaching them and of course, you'll have them in your manuals or in the PowerPoint presentation. But it's a very simple, straightforward question there, and it's very, very powerful. So going back to the surface block, so poor time management, it, it could be as a result of somebody who's a be perfect, someone who spends too much time getting everything to perfection, and therefore misses deadlines. So look beyond the surface block. <clears throat> 
Someone who avoids conflict could be as a result of being a please people person, wants to be everybody's friend and shies away from dealing with conflicts. Fear of presentations could be a try harder, someone with poor self-image, so always expects the worst. Poor delegator, maybe a be strong person, wants to do everything themselves and doesn't trust others. Procrastination, maybe a try harder, so busy, so busy volunteering for new jobs but likely to put off finishing old ones. Poor listener could be a hurry up, tends to be impatient and likes to interrupt. And unassertive, maybe a please people person, always willing to sacrifice own needs to please others. So look beyond the surface block to identify what the core blocker is, because that's what you need to actually work on in order to in order to sort of help them in your coaching. So let's just take the uh, personal driver. So <clears throat> you will have completed the personal driver as part of the program. If you look at the bottom tab and you right click, you can then open up each one of those sheets. So there's a, an explanation on how to use the drivers that have been identified. It will give you the scoring for each person that completes the um, spreadsheet. And then for each of the five drivers, there's an, a description. Out of interest sake, this is my uh, my uh, personal drivers. You can see I'm very strong on be perfect and hurry up. And probably because I have be perfect in my profile, I try to do really sort of top class work, but I try to do fairly fast, which is a bit of a recipe for uh, for uh, mental anguish but you know I've learned to live with it and that's the key thing but I have been helped over the years I've been helped to focus on less is more I've been helped to and, and that's the power of coaching you can always look to actually help people once you understand what their drivers are so in using this tool as part of the coaching you'll do, start by identifying what the surface block is. Then look downwards to what you think the core blocker is. So, and then once you've identified that, then you can work with your coachee to help them to uh, work on the area that they need to be working on. So in the example, someone assertive could be as a result of being maybe a try harder and a please people person. So therefore, they don't want to sort of um, push their views. They're more inclined to actually listen to the views of others. So perhaps what you could do in coaching is help them in order to be able to say no when they need to say no, but in an assertive way to, to assert what they want and to be strong in terms of sticking to what they want. Quite often people believe uh, assertiveness is aggression. It's not. Assertiveness is a very good behavior. And then help them to get organized and then perhaps help them to focus on, on completion. So instead of actually trying to put them on some other training program that might benefit them, you're actually dealing specifically what with uh, the area that they need to be helped on. So when would you use uh, the overcoming blockers tool or the personal drivers tool? Uh, it's a useful tool to use as you get to know your coachee better, when you want to raise their self-awareness and when there is a recurring dysfunctional behavior. So very good tool in your toolbox, uh, helpful in terms of using your coaching skills. And once you've identified who, what the core blocker is, you can move on.